Well, hello. Today, I'd like to welcome you to what should be my first impressions of the Jin. Ha whoops, <laughs> of the Gehas 731. But unfortunately, the original video of the first impressions is lost. But I did provide a link to the audio. But I'm going to have to do a redo. And uh, you won't get to see Parker Quink washable blue, but hopefully you'll get to see a good pen. So let's dive into it. All right, so this is the Gay House 731, and we're redoing this. So this is not a first impression, uh, but I didn't have the nifty squirrel pen holder last time I did this, so that's, a, that's an improvement. But anyway, we'll take a closer look here. Yeah, it's not tipping because I leveled my desk before I filmed this. I also tried facing the squirrel a different direction, which... Yeah. So, apparently the squirrel needs to face toward my bedroom for this to work. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is the Gay House 731. Not much for branding. You know, I respect that. They don't have to splash their logo everywhere. This uh, subtle little triangle thing is uh, their branding. And then right here on the cap, we've got Geha. And nothing on this finial. And a circle on this finial, which sometimes seems to be their branding. <clears throat> Open it up. Now, in my original filming of the first impression, I had not realized that this was gold. But yeah, we've got a gold nib here. And I did make a mistake when I uh, recorded. I said it says 140. Uh, it's actually a 14C for 14 carat. So, gold nib. So good for Geha. Of course, it has the reserve tank. And inside. Eventually. <laughs> we have a Geha cartridge. Now, uh, one of the things I did during my original first impression is I talked about cartridges and so on. So let's just do that for a second. So Geha had its own proprietary cartridges, and after they were bought up by Pelican, they continued to use their own proprietary cartridges. But they made an addition to them so they could work with other pens. So this is the end that goes in the Geha pen. This is the more traditional standard international end that you're used to. So Geha's cartridges work with both. Uh, so this is an old cartridge, and uh, you know I would have to inject some water to make it work. But I bought this pen from Proto Pens, and they sent along this little monstrosity, which uh, at the time of fi uh, the original filming I didn't realize why, but now I know. So these are. Very dried out <laughs> cross cartridges. Come on here, pup. I didn't realize this was going to be this awkward when I set about filming this tonight. Doggone. See, they put their pen, Proto Pens puts their pens in this thing. So, oh heck with it. That's what scissors were invented for. Boom. Roasted. Add that to my mess. So, uh, yeah, cross cart cartridges are a little different from your ordinary. So I had the bright idea, what about a cross converter? Now, this is not a Geha. This is an upcoming pen. I won't tell you what brand it is. That I discovered had the same problem. And I was able to fit a cross converter in it. Because cross has a proprietary converter. Now, what I will tell you is that... It fits perfectly in this pen. The trouble is, it's too long. It fits in this mystery pen that will be upcoming, but it does not fit in the Geha. So a lot of what I read about using cross converters is to, you have to do some cutting on them. So, who knows, I may do that down the road. But for now, I think I'm going to be happy uh, using a syringe and refilling either the Geha convert cartridges or refilling, apparently now I can do this, cross cartridges. <coughs> so now you know. 
So yeah, that's a pain about gay hop pens. If you don't buy one that's a piston filler, the that whole proprietary ca cartridge converter thing. Yeah, they may have found something that works great for their brand. But what if they quit making them? Then what? That's where Geha's at. All right, since it is not a first impression, I just grabbed the wrong notebook. Still grabbed the wrong notebook because I'm not thinking. Since it's not a first impression, I'm not going to put this in the first impressions notebook. I'm going to put it in this notebook, which I use for reviews, which I haven't really done a full review lately. But uh, anyway... I'm guessing at the size of the nib, the ink is Colorverse Golden Record. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to just do a little bit of flex test. Now, if you listen to my audio of the original, you'll find that I was impressed by this. You know, it's not amazing. But it does a great job. Just enough line variation to be interesting. A smear test. That's a wet pen. Wetness and flow. works pretty well and finally oh sorry we got to do reverse writing I can't always remember what all tests I do in these reviews because I haven't done an actual review in a while hopefully soon I'm gonna have a lot of free time coming up no I'm not getting fired but <laughs> it feels like it sometimes okay um, some flows, smear test. reverse writing sorry which uh, is a little more uh, feedbacky, but I, I would say a very nice extra fine. Uh, and finally, the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. And I learned from the man himself, don't press down, just see how it goes. And I think it goes very well. And because it's a review, we got to do a quote. So I got in trouble, my job for using this quote. So we're gonna do it here on the channel because I don't learn. Right, so all in all, a, a very good writer. I, I'm enjoying this, especially now that I'm going through my second iteration of using it. Uh, it it's, it's a slim pen, but very pleasant. And did you hear that snap? Let's do it over by the microphone. Very satisfying click when you cap it. And if you're into that kind of thing, it posts very well also. Not with a click, but it posts very well. So I've been very happy with it. And uh, I am sorry I lost my original footage that went with the audio, but hey, it was supposed to save me time this week because uh, I've been saving it all for now and uh, had to film this anyway. But that's okay, I got to protest a little bit. So, uh, Geha 731, ladies and gentlemen. So that was the uh, Geha 731. Just a nice slim pen, uh, vintage pen, and uh, metal, but... Uh, plastic where it counts and 
quite a pleasant pen. I uh, Now that I'm on its second fill, I, I filled up this uh, Geha cartridge using uh, you know, Colorverse ink this time. But uh, expect a video down the road where I'm going to talk about uh, the interoperability of this of this brand with uh, cross cartridges and uh, converters. I actually have uh, a few pens that are going to come into that discussion, so uh, look forward to that. But anyway, uh, other than the proprietary cartridge thing, turns out you know it's actually a very nice, comfortable pen. I was surprised. In fact, if you listen to the audio of my original review. I was surprised to find it had a gold nib because I just assumed it was steel, but it wasn't. It was gold. So uh, I was very impressed with that and uh, very surprised. Uh, good writer, and uh, I've been enjoying writing with it just lately. It also uh, very well passes the pocket test. Just uh, all, all around uh, a good pen. Uh, the longevity of these proprietary cartridges, which are no longer made, bit of a question. But uh, going to enjoy it while it lasts. So, want well, to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.